All right, you guys, if you love succulents as much as I do, then you are going to love this video. My name is Jamie. I'm the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. And look, there's Otis. My sister painted him. All right, everyone, and for my first project, I am going to be doing over this wheelbarrow that I picked up for $4.09 at my local Goodwill store. I found this and knew that I wanted to make a project with it, and the first thing I did was grab some white spray paint. I'm using the uh, Rust-Oleum's just matte white paint on this, and I did do about three coats on this. This was a tough one to cover up. The... Uh, MDF that this little wheelbarrow is made out of was uh, was uh, very porous, we'll say. And uh, I did end up doing, like I said, about three coats of this. So once it was all done, uh, I was really happy with it. It was still kind of rustic looking, but it turned out really, really cute. Now, these succulents, speaking of cute, oh my gosh, this was such a good deal, you guys. I grabbed 20 pieces, a 22-piece set from Amazon for $22.99. Now, that is cheaper than what you can get succulents at Dollar Tree for. And I have to tell you, these succulents are incredible, and they're going to fill up this wheelbarrow so, so good. Now, I also did grab some reindeer moss, and I have this floral foam from Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't like Amazon or you don't want to order any, you could certainly use Dollar Tree succulents as well. It might cost you a little bit more, but this succulent set is exceptional. I absolutely loved the way this looked, especially this one. Look at this guy. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my Dollar Tree foam, go ahead and unwrap that. And as you can see, these two blocks fit perfectly inside of here. Now I do kind of wish I maybe would have grabbed one more and um, kind of filled up the wheelbarrow. But the way it ends up looking at the end, I'm actually really, really happy with it still. So if you, um, you know, if you don't have enough floral foam, don't worry about it. You'll see it's going to turn out really, really gorgeous. Now I'm going to add a lot of hot glue onto that foam block and just glue that directly down into the wheelbarrow. You certainly don't have to do that. The great thing about using hot glue is that you can really, really easily remove it. I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue stick here into the back of my Shore Bonder glue gun that I love so, so much. And we are just going to add more glue on the back of that floral foam block. And we are going to stick this down and we are going to start adding our succulents. Now, I have never been a floral designer or anything like that, uh, clearly, as you can see from that one here. But uh, I did just kind of start playing around with these and just kind of figuring, you know, these long kind of traily pieces, I thought that they would look really cute. I thought that it could be a great way to even fill up like the back of that wheelbarrow. And I just kind of started stabbing the foam. There was literally nothing that I did. There was no real plan of action here. And I just started kind of stabbing the foam. And I love the way that this started to look. And as you can see with all of these great succulents, it really started to fill everything out. And it just started looking amazing. The great thing about this is I literally used all 22 of those succulents in this wheelbarrow and it could not have turned out cuter especially this big one in the middle here i was so so happy with this particular one the size of that one you guys this was a 22 piece set for $22.99 and shipping was free because I'm an Amazon Prime member. I will definitely have this succulent set linked in my bio below because I think it is such an incredible deal, especially for the quality of the succulent plants that you're getting. They look real and this looks so, so cute. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel out so, so much. Also, be sure and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you will be notified every time I do upload a brand new video like this gorgeous succulent wheelbarrow here. As you can see, we're going to add a little bit of color in here, but then I'm going to decide not to add that one there. We're going to spin this around and we're just literally filling in all the nooks and crannies. And when this is is done. It is so gorgeous. I love the way this looks so, so much. I think that this is going to be a staple I'm going to keep in my office. And also what is great about this is look 
at the transition that you see when you take this white wheelbarrow and you put it up against like dark furniture like I've got here in my office. I am loving the way that this looks and I think that this is going to be a piece that I really do have for a long, long time. And for my next DIY, I'm going to be using a piece of my scrap MDF here. Now, you can use scrap wood from Dollar Tree. You can use free wood that you can pick up on Facebook Marketplace. Home Depot and Lowe's has free wood kind of uh, bins that you can get stuff from. So definitely take advantage of those. And then you're going to grab four of these smaller clay pots. And then you're going to grab four of these hanging lid kind of converters. They take a mason jar and they turn a mason jar into something that you can hang, but they are also the perfect size for these smaller pots. How cute is that? So we are going to take this and we are going to create a hanging planter. In my case, I'm going to be doing a planting uh, or succulent planter, and uh, we are going to really create something that is super, super cute. Now, the great thing about this is, you know, my style, if you know me, I tend to kind of lean more towards that industrial vibe. So like the, the black lids that I'm using here and then the wood tone, that is perfect in my house. It's perfect in my office. However, this is so easy to be customized. You could totally paint this. You can totally do a lot of different things with this. Make it your own. Have Fun with it. Now, you're also going to need a couple really small screws, and you're going to want to take all of these uh, these uh, uh, chains off of here. What couldn't I think of what these were called? And um, they won't come off, by the way, if you just pull them like that. Uh, I thought they would. They, they may if I would have kept pulling. I don't have a lot of strength still in my left arm. So definitely grab a pair of pliers or something like that. It will make it go so much easier, I'm telling you. It will make all the difference in the world. And uh, as I was just kind of pulling those off, you just kind of pull and twist. Be sure and keep the chain. You can never know when you're going to be able to use that kind of chain. Those chains could be fantastic to use for hangers. You can use it for all kinds of things. So go ahead and take all of your chains off of your lids, and then you are going to start to kind of measure out your pilot holes of where you are going to be screwing these lids into your board. Now, the way I did that was I literally just kind of took my straight edge here and I took a ruler and I just laid it out flat across my wood piece and just kind of eyeballed the lid placement. I was really more more worried about keeping the lids straight. And um, again, the spacing, you could certainly measure that if you wanted to. I totally eyeballed it and I think it worked out really, really good. The first thing I did was drill some pilot holes directly into my wood MDF piece. And then you are going to drill holes into your lids. This will help when you are screwing everything together. Now, obviously when you do this, you want to be very, very careful. If you have a vice grip or something like that, you should definitely use that and not be a bonehead like I did here holding my lids. I did go very, very slow with my drill and just made sure I was super, super careful. I'm trying not to have any more accidents, especially with that left arm. That was that one that was broken. So we need to make sure we're keeping everything nice and safe. And then I literally just took my drill and I am just drilling those right into the back to where you have something that looks like this. So now for this next part, we are going to take four succulents that I picked up from Dollar Tree. These are the ones that are already in the little pots. And what's so great about these is that you can reuse the foam or the styrofoam that's in there. All you're going to do is just kind of work the foam out of there. Some of them will come out really, really easy, especially if you find these that have this uh, kind of spongy foam to it. They are the best ones. The ones that have styrofoam, they will kind of end up crumbling because of the glue. But again, they will work itself out. You could certainly do it. So now you want to put a hanger on the back of your MDF board. However, I do not recommend you do it this way. And I'm going to actually show you the mistake that I made. So the first thing I did was just kind of figure out with my rope here about how long I wanted to, it to be. And then I cut my rope down. Then I added some glue thinking that that would be the best bet for this because I knew it was going to be heavy. I wanted to add a generous amount of glue. I put my rope down. And as you can see, I also used my little 
tape method that I always do. I add my rope, I add a bunch of hot glue, and then I also add my green kind of painter's tape on top of that. I do that while the glue is nice and wet still, and um, it holds really, really well. However, the problem with this is that it became kind of top heavy, and uh, the rope was just not sturdy enough to kind of hold this. So when I kind of figured that out, I thought, well, maybe if I added like a little anchor or something on the bottom of this, that that would help. So I added another piece of rope and um, thought, well, maybe that would help, but it just did not work. So I ended up taking the rope off of it completely. Um, I did leave the one on there that I put at the bottom, but I did replace the rope with this hanger that I had. It was in my kind of junk drawer. I always say you should have a junk drawer for these little random pieces because you never know when you're going to need them again or use them again. And this was the perfect example. I was able to take this. I did add some hot glue and then I did take a hammer and just kind of bang it into the MDF and then combined with the tape method. This was the perfect way to hang this. And as you can see, it is hanging on the wall. It is great. I love this again so much. Think that it's so, so cute and such a great way to use those little hanging lids. And of course, our favorite Project Focus Succulents. Now, if you are still with me in the comments below, leave the word succulent. Our next project, of course, is going to feature even more succulents. We're taking a couple of those extra clay pots that we had, some succulents and some reindeer moss, and we are going to create the cutest little magnets with these magnets that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. I was shocked when I saw these. They were from Staples and I could not believe that these were at Dollar Tree. So of course I had to grab them. I found them in the hardware section. And by the way, this is six magnets in this package, which is fantastic. And these are really, really strong by the way. So for this next part, all you have to do is just add some reindeer moss into each one of your terracotta pots here. And you can just fill this up. Feel free and fill this up. Um, you could add some foam if you wanted to or something to kind of help fill that up. But the reindeer moss is actually really, really light. So um, if you put, you know, rocks or something like that, you're going to compromise the integrity of your magnets, which you don't want to do. And so just kind of fill up those pots Enjoy the process. It's okay if you have a little extra that you're, you know, giving in there. You're not you're not wasting everything. It's it's okay. Now you're gonna also add some hot glue to the bottom of your succulents. Now, these are the succulents from Dollar Tree that you get that have the kind of clip on the bottom of them. And then I've just removed the clip. These were actually in my stash. I didn't have to remove the clip from some of the previous ones, or at least not for this one. And you're just going to repeat the process. Now I've got two different ones here. I think I like this one better. And uh, as you can see, I already removed that clip here as well. So again, just adding a bunch of hot glue and just gluing it right on top. Now, once that has set, then you are going to glue the magnets onto your terracotta pot. Now, I'm using two of the magnets. That's why they look kind of thick there. Because remember, that was a six pack of magnets. And um, these are going to hold remarkably well on the refrigerator. And uh, again, I'm just using hot glue for this. The great thing about hot glue is if you decide you want to use these pots for something else, all you have to do is take your heat gun, activate that glue, and then you'll be able to pull those magnets off of there really, really easily. The same, of course, with the succulents and the reindeer moss and kind of everything else involved. Now, as you can see, these are on my stainless steel refrigerator. I do not recommend that you put magnets on the stainless steel part or on the shiny part of your refrigerator just to prevent scratches. Um, on the side of my refrigerator, I have a black side, and that's where I keep all of my magnet collections, including this little special magnet that I picked up when I was in Boston with all of my YouTube friends, and we had such a fantastic trip. This is just a great reminder of that boat that we took over to Salem. We had such a good time, and I am so looking forward to seeing everybody again. I hope you love this project. And then for the next project, we're going to take this very cute 
board that I picked up from Dollar Tree. We have two more magnets. We have these um, rub-on transfers. And then, of course, we have some succulents. I'm not sure if you have seen these yet in your Crafter Square section, but definitely be on the lookout for them. They are a metal kind of a magnetic board, if you will, and there's cardboard on the back, and you can make such a cute magnetic board with succulents. We're, again, taking that succulent that I didn't use from that previous project. We're going to go ahead and just carefully remove this. I could have taken some scissors if I wanted to. It's kind of in a zen mood, just kind of chilling out tonight, listening to some music, creating some crafts. Went ahead and took off that little glob of glue that was holding on that clip and then I'm just going to trim this piece here down as tightly as I can and then we are just going to add our magnet directly on the back of this. Now for this one we're only going to use just one of those magnets so you can go ahead and just separate those and then just hang have that other magnet in your stash or if you have another succulent go ahead and create another succulent magnet or another magnet of some kind that will complement your board that you're going to be doing here. This is definitely Definitely kind of a farmhousey kind of a look. This is a cool vibe. Um, I would say it even leans a little modern farmhouse with the brown kind of tones. And then, of course, adding in the black lettering. These rub-on transfers, the new rub-on transfers that they are getting from Dollar Tree are just incredible. If you've not seen these Definitely look for them in the sticker section or in the crafter square section and uh, use some scissors because the uh, paper or the plastic that is kind of sealing everything in here, it's really, really good and really, really hard to rip into. Now, I decided I wanted to use this welcome one in the center and I loved kind of the um, plants that were flanking each side of the welcome sign there. So I'm just going to cut those out. The great thing about these rub-on transfers too is that you can really customize this and you can make this your own. Uh, for me, I thought that these were going to be just perfect. I love the size of them. I loved everything about them. And what's so cool about them is that they're really easy, easy to work with. When you remove that white backing and you place this down, this is pretty close to being permanent, I have to tell you. So, um, Make sure that when you do place this down, it is in a spot that you love. And then I started rubbing it with my finger, but I did pull out my Cricut tool and I just kind of rubbed it like this. And that really helped just kind of make sure that every single part was adhering down. Now I use this uh, Cricut tool here, but you could also find something very similar at Dollar Tree. They also have this kind of spatula kind of tool that uh, Cricut makes, but also I've seen a kind of a knockoff version at Dollar Tree that you can use. And as you can see, when you peel this away, it really, really looks amazing. You don't have to have an expensive vinyl cutter or anything. I do recommend that you not push down quite as hard as I did. As you can see, I kind of dented mine in the corner there. For the hanger, I didn't want to use nautical rope because I thought it would just look too thick. And I didn't want to use just one piece of twine either. So I'm going to take my twine here and I'm going to triple it up. And when I triple it up, then I'm just going to kind of cut the ends of it. That way I have three equal pieces. And then I'm going to tie it in a knot in the center. And then I'm going to use my glue and tape trick on the back of this and just make sure that that hanger is in place and perfect. And I decided at the last minute I would add another little rub-on transfer. So I'm going to do that here in the corner. And boom, you've got the cutest little succulent magnet memo board. You can hang this on your refrigerator. I kind of even think this could be something really cute for the front door or maybe even for the back door, like a honey-do list kind of a thing. I think that there's so many fun things that you could do with this, and it's super, super cute, and it features the project of the day, which is all about succulents. All right, and for my last succulent project, we're going to take this white vase that I picked up from Dollar Tree, some twine, and of course, a succulent, 
And believe it or not, these vases are plastic. I've seen them in white and I've seen them in black. And I really love the texture of these. And I think that they could be used for so many cool projects. Now for this one, we're keeping this so, so simple. I'm literally going to wrap kind of the center of this with some twine. I'm gonna add just a dab of hot glue. Maybe, maybe that was a little more than a dab. And then I'm going to take my twine and we are just going to wrap it around the neck or the skinnier part of this. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm just kind of doing maybe four or five kind of passes around the center. And then I'm going to bring it back to that kind of area where I added my, my little dab of hot glue. And I'm just going to trim my twine off. And then we're going to add our succulent. And then we're going to add a little bow and you've got a cute little vase that you can use as a display on a bookshelf. It could go in the bathroom. There's a lot of different ways you could do this and you could even have some fun with some other attachments other than succulents if you're not in love with succulents quite like I am. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching to all my subscribers out there that stayed to the end. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for being here. If you are brand new to the channel, hopefully you will stick around and subscribe and become a crafty DIY guy regular. I guess that's a new thing I'm making up. I don't really know. All right, guys, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.